Archville for Nintendo Switch and the PC is a true bullet hell RPG and it's surprising that so few games have combined this award winning formula before. Bullet hell games are nearly always roguelike, which I do enjoy, but sometimes they have their flaws. With the exception of Hades, nearly all the games of this nature lack a story of unique characters or a sense of adventure as you play the same levels over and over. And sometimes when playing these bullet hell games, you actually want to develop your character long term and hold on to and upgrade your favorite weapons. And this is where Archvale shines bright. It takes the fun and frantic action of a bullet hell game and finally gives players the engaging characters to interact with, a great weapon crafting and development progress, plenty of side quests, and a sense of progression throughout the entire experience. A true combo of RPG and bullet hell. However, while the game sounds perfect, it still presents some flaws that show the game could have used a bit more time in the oven to finish. So today, let's discuss Archville, what it does right, and if the flaws are bad enough to detract from the core experience. Before we get too far into that, welcome to the Ogles channel. Thanks for watching today. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to click that subscribe button down below for your latest in gaming news, reviews, content, and a lot of other things we throw in as well. But let's get back to talking about Archville. Archville begins with instructions to awaken to find the seven stones hidden throughout your world to open up the gate to Archville itself. And then the game feels like a 16-bit version of Breath of the Wild because you awaken in a dimly lit bluish cave with water all around. I mean, it probably wasn't intentional, or maybe it was because the game does borrow from Zelda and several of its actual mechanics. But from here, you learn the basics and off you go throughout your land, hacking away at enemies in your quest to find the seven stones. The action in this game is top notch. You can choose between a large variety of weapons that range from archer to melee to magic, each with its own power, ranges, and capabilities. Now, personally, I enjoy the magic weapons the most, but it's hard not to enjoy the pure power that a melee weapon can punch. Like most bullet hell games, the screen is filled with projectiles from the enemies as you attempt to dodge them all to destroy everything on the screen to advance, and the enemies vary greatly amongst the multiple areas that you will visit, and the boss fights in each of these areas is an intense showdown. Usually the boss can wipe you out in a matter of seconds, so dodging is even more important in these particular spots. Bosses always guard the stones that you're attempting to retrieve, however, there are several smaller bosses scattered throughout the region as well to ensure the game is always offering a challenge. The bosses are fun, frantic, and well designed, which fits well because the controls are very fluid throughout the game. As you defeat the enemies and the bosses throughout, you can also collect money and scrap materials which can be used to craft better weapons and purchase upgrades. And unlike roguelike games, these weapon upgrades save your character even after dying. This is the way I like upgrades and weapons to be. And speaking of upgrades, this is where the towns come into play. As you progress, you will come across a variety of small towns where you meet plenty of town folk that have unique charm about them and are always willing to help. Whether it's the literal piggy bank to help you store your money, blacksmiths to help you craft your weapons, wizards to help you purchase charms, merchants to sell you items, and my personal favorite, the toad who loves a mega plum so much that he mixes them up into a stew and gives you more heart containers. I mean, just look at him. But the town is full of colorful characters who are willing to help you along your mission for the right price. The towns are easy to get to because each one has a fountain in them and they can be used as checkpoints or healing stations. You'll find the fountains throughout the entire game within towns and the fields and you can teleport to any of the ones that you have activated. As you're searching for the stones, you'll also come across plenty of side paths to take, which leads you to little mini games to earn brooches, which offer small buffs to your character. The mini games have you travel around the circle collecting jewels as you're being bombarded with bullets that you have to continually dodge. Usually, there are three stages to the mini game, and they get pretty darn hard as the game progresses. And I really do like the inclusion of them, though, because it branches out from the core action of the game and gives players a change of pace a little bit. Now the levels in the game all vary from different atmospheres as you collect the stones and all have their own unique direction and tone to them. The music to accompany each of these areas is very well done and is great throughout the entire game. The levels can also be accessed in seemingly any order you want, so you can go through the hardest areas of the game first if you want to brave your way in and fight for some of the best weapons early on. While I can't speak to how hard this actually is on the lower difficulties, on the hardest difficulty which we played, this idea was very, very, very difficult and I personally wouldn't recommend it. However, the game does let you decide whichever direction you want to go in. 
While the core game, the mechanics, to upgrade, and just about everything in this game is top notch, it does have its flaws. The flaws are not in the design choices, but rather from just not thoroughly testing the game before launch. The game is littered with little glitches throughout, and it is most evident in the multiplayer mode. Sometimes a player would just disappear on the screen, just a little shadow underneath their body. Sometimes after a cutscene, players would become fused together as one, like some sort of mutant hero. Sometimes a player can get stuck behind a wall. Sometimes sound are missing when getting killed in the bonus areas. Sometimes the game thinks one player is still alive even though both players have died and the game just freezes until you restart and many other little glitches like this tend to arise. Now while all of these are very noticeable and it can be pretty frustrating as well, none of them are game breaking. Even the one where the game freezes after both players have died, you can just restart the game and you'll be at the same spot you had appeared in after you had died. With any games, I do expect some glitches. However, I will say this is a higher number of glitches than usual, but like I said, none of these glitches are game breaking, and all of these could easily be fixed by just patching the game in the near future. Overall, Archvale is an incredibly fun bullet hell game that brings in plenty of RPG elements to make the game stand out amongst some heavy competition. Yes, the game has some glitches and flaws, however, nothing is bad enough to warrant avoiding the game. The game is usually $15 on the eShop, and I would 100% say it's worth the $15. The game is just pure retro fun. But if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, go out there, find a great game to play, just simply have a great rest of the day.